Today we're here with Marco from uh, Cassier Gold. He's the president. Thank you for joining us, Marco. Thank you for having me here, Sean. Sure. Uh, let's start with like a high-level team overview and how you guys are different. Yeah, so, so Cassier Gold, we are a Canadian gold explorer. Um, we have uh, an entire gold district, the Cassier Gold District. That's where we're focused. Um, there we already have a 1.4 million ounce resource right at surface. It's effectively open uh, in all directions, laterally and at depth. Um, this year we have a 20,000 meter drill program underway, uh, at, actually towards the end of it. And uh, we're going to be starting releasing results really, really soon. Uh, so it's uh, exciting times. And uh, I guess to go along with it, uh, to this uh, great asset, we have a really outstanding uh, group of uh, board members, executives, advisors that are really, really successful in, in, the, in the gold uh, uh, space. So it's uh, it's a great company with, with great people and with great prospects as well. Great. So how many team members total in the, like, the CLEX and the board? Is it? So the board, the, we're, we're, there's uh, six people on the board. Um, we have uh, uh, a couple of geos, uh, you know, Steve Robertson and James Maxwell. Uh, Steve Robertson has uh, won the Schultz Award for Excellence in My Development in 2016 for his work at uh, Red Chris. Uh, it's one of the most significant uh, uh, open pit uh, uh, mine developments in, in BC, if not the, the biggest. That mine is just 200 kilometers south from our Cassier Gold property. Uh, we also have James Maxwell uh, on our board. Uh, he, he was appointed recently. He, he was the exploration director for Sabina Gold and Silver. Um, they basically uh, uh, have nearly 10 million ounces in the Arctic Circle. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a great addition to the board. And then we have Steve Levlin, uh, Chris Stewart, uh, as well, and, and Michael Wood and myself on the board that bring, really bring expertise in the capital markets. Uh, uh, Steve Levelins is a former president and CEO of IM Gold, a lot of experience in, in uh, with production mm -hmm. uh, in developing projects. And Chris Stewart is a mining engineer and turnaround specialist. He's also the, fair, the former president and CEO of, of McEwen, and he's now the CEO of, of Minto Copper. It's a, a copper producer in the Yukon. So it's, we have a really uh, well-rounded team as well that um, you know, enables us to, to progress the company, whichever you know, strategy we take. Um, and then you know, on, the, on the advisory team, we have the great Doug Kerman. It's the main reason I joined the project. He was the one that uh, really highlighted the, the district scale potential of the Cassier Gold property. Uh, we have um, also David Rees, he's one of the most sought after structural geologists in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have also uh, Vern Sheen, uh, our new VP of exploration, comes from B2 BIMA group. Uh, he has helped to find five, uh, 8 million ounces of resource reserves. 5 million of those are now in production. So his expertise is really taking advanced assets, trying to find the edges of the deposits, then take it through economic studies. Um, and eventually into production. So that was really the expertise that we were looking for. And then we have a really energetic uh, and young, uh, uh, you know, technical team, geological team on the ground, uh, also led by Jill Maxwell, which, which is, you know, just a rock star. And, you know, I could just keep Go going on people. Sounds very long and deep. Very long. <laughs> yeah, it's a, you know, a lot of breadth and depth yeah. into the team. It's, it's I, I'm, I'm very, very lucky to be surrounded by this, this caliber of people. That's excellent. Um, you know, since we are um, people that look at our website are typically pro public retail investors, you know, and they are concerned of how much skin is in the game and for a lot of the uh, team members. So if you could talk about, hey, you know, they've got a good, great salary, how much have they invested maybe on their own? Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. So actually we have uh, the skin of the game is for me as an investor is one of the most important factors and indicators in any company. Yeah. And uh, I think on that sense, we're also very lucky. Uh, insider ownership is roughly at 8% with our company, so it's relatively 80%. high. 8 8 Oh, 8. Okay. 8. Okay. <laughs> Not 80. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> uh, but uh, if we keep going at this rate, maybe we'll get there. But sure. um, no, it's 8%. 8%. It's, a, it's a very, it's a good insider ownership level. Uh, you know, myself, I've, you know, I've, I've, I've acquired and spent more in, in acquiring shares than I ever get paid in my salary. Wow. So uh, I, I really believe in the project and that's shared among, you know, board members, executives, and it's, uh, it's, it's, a, and it's an, an important indicator and, um, you know, across the board, uh, a lot of ownership. Actually, just uh, recently we closed a, 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 um, 
uh, flow through financing that was led by insiders. Um, you know, we, we got off, you know, off the, um, you know, we, we started the financing with basically one million in orders from from insiders, from you know, between uh, you know, board members, executives, uh, geological team, uh, and you know, better halves as well. And uh, it's it's great to see that kind of commitment. And it, it it is important for any investor to look at you know, insider ownership and. Uh, you know, I think it's it's very telling the way insiders act. Actually, actually speak louder, louder than the yeah, words. They're not there just for the sound. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, in terms of um, this the price of gold, what is your concern if it drops, let's say, twenty percent? How is the company going to survive, and what's the runway? Yeah, so we, we we are in a very lucky position. Our we have a cash cash balance of over ten million dollars uh, right now. Our market cap is roughly fifty million. And we're just on the cusp of starting releasing the results from our largest campaign to date. Over 20,000 meters are planned. We've, we've already hit 18,000 and we might get past the 20,000. We're likely to get past the 20,000. We would like to get it to 22,000. Let's see how far we get. It will depend on, the, on a few factors, including the weather. Uh, but, um, but it's, it, there's a lot of new school coming. So, uh, uh, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not too concerned about the financing of the company, but uh, I, I, in terms of the gold price, uh, you know, I, I think it's possible that we see a kind of a liquidation event and gold dropping uh, 20%. Uh, I, won't, I wouldn't be betting on it. You know, I've been, you know, my, my portfolio, I've been accumulating cash and gold stock and, you know, gold in as well. Um, I think it's... Uh, if you try to time exactly the bottom of the market, you can't time the market. Exactly. You know, if you if you're comfortable with that price and you like that price, you know, I, I'm buying. That's that's what I'm doing. Right. So, um, so I, you know, I'm not too concerned about the the, the, the financing of, of the company. I think we're in a good position as a company. We're okay. crashed up. We have new flow coming, and I think uh, you know, regard, regardless of the gold price, I think we'll, we'll we'll be doing fine. Of course, the whole sector moves a little bit with the with the price of gold. But uh, right now, where I'm sitting, uh, I, I see a lot, of, a lot more upside to gold than downside. I mean, the, the, the fundamentals for gold have never been better. Uh, and I, yeah, I think uh, a lot of people have been predicting a, a big gold price in, in the near term. And, you know, I, I certainly believe in that too, and, and I'm positioned to benefit from that as well. Right. Yeah, in history, it's always shown that fiat currencies have failed. And the um, first thing people go to is things like gold and silver. So um, what, uh, in terms of the shareholders, what is the percentage more private versus uh, retail versus institutional? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have a very good, uh, you know, institutional shareholder base, roughly 24% of our shareholder base is, uh, is institutional uh, investors. Uh, we have uh, names like Grasscat Capital, um, uh, EMA, Larry Leopard, out of the US here as well, Sprott, uh, American, US Global, Ixios, uh, Emerging Markets Capital. Uh, it's, it's a long list. I can keep going. We have a lot of, a lot of very smart people in the space right. that are our investors, and we really appreciate that. I, and I think that's also uh, kind of an endorsement in, in and on itself having that kind of uh, quality institutional shareholders. So uh, we always like to, uh, to increase the amount of share institutional shareholders as well. So you know, that's, that's also why we're here and uh, you know, looking forward to, to, to continue to build on, on what already is a really good place uh, right now. Great. What other catalysts do you think will, drill, will make the stock move other than you know, drill results and things like that? Well, we have the 20,000 meters worth of drill results. Um, Obviously, the following up on that, uh, we might also have a resource update that will be dependent on results and also team availability for, for the program for, for next year. Uh, but I think it, that's, that's potentially in the cards. Um, in addition to that, so that, that, that uh, resource update will probably come, if it comes uh, right after this real campaign, it will come probably in Q2 2023. Um, we also uh, have an excellent relationship with our First Nation and community partners, so we might see a formal agreement to translate that excellent relationship into, into a formal document. Um, and, uh, and, that, and that's a lot, so already, you know, just the 20,000 meters of drilling, uh, you know, there's a, it's, it's a very good position to be, you know, knowing that, um, you know, we're, 
we have that kind of uh, uh, news flow coming. So, uh, um, I mean, other than that, we have gold price. Um, that could be in our benefit. And uh, uh, I mean, uh, I guess those are, those are the main uh, the main catalysts. Sure. Uh, we we have we have conversations going with uh, with uh, uh, with mid tiers and majors as well. I think it's too early for us. You know, our goal is to, uh, as a company, the strategy of our company is really to prove as much of the exploration poten potential as we can and de de risk the project as quickly as we can. Um, because a project like this. With this kind of size, with this kind of potential, with this kind of infrastructure in a safe jurisdiction, will in all likelihood be developed by a major. Uh, having said that, in, in maybe coming back to the beginning of the interview, uh, we do also have a team that is really well rounded. So we also have a team. Should that not happen, we are well equipped to move it ahead. Uh, move it ahead uh, with the project ourselves as well in terms of the development scenario. Excellent. So you have like two exit strategies, work on it on your own or have a major pick it up. Yeah, so it's, the main strategy is having a major picking it up. Yeah. Uh, having said that, we are actually have a very well-rounded team that is well-equipped to, 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 to do it ourselves, should, you know, option yeah. A not uh, no, for some excellent. reason. That, that's excellent. You got broad base of skills there. So. Exactly. Yeah. Um, any uh, additional in information you'd like to give... Uh, Private investors and opportunities that down the road that are you know, yeah I think right. I think uh, you know uh, right now in this in this market uh, you know at all see that there's a lot of good companies that are um, undervalued as well we're not the only ones I think I think we are our our valuation you know everyone complains about their valuation all the CEOs do mm -hmm. uh, you know I'm no different but. Uh, when I look at the market, I can see, you know, we are relatively undervalued for what we have, but there's a few other good companies out there as well. Uh, there are some concerns about uh, cost inflation, being it energy for, you know, remote sites or, or for CapEx. Um, and, you know, a lot of investors now are a little bit skeptical or, you know, afraid to jump into development stories because, you know, the feasibility study from one year or two years ago is no longer valid. Um, and on that sense, we are in a very lucky position because we are a brownfield project. So we come with a lot of existing infrastructure. We have high return seven by seconding our property. Uh, so we have dozens of kilometers of paved roads in our project. In mm. fact, you can drive from Vancouver all the way to the top of that 1.4 million ounce resource without ever leaving a paved road. We have access to power, we have mine permits, we have 160 kilometers of property access roads in our property. Um, we have my, uh, we have a fully owned and permanent mill on site. We have 25 kilometers of underground workings in our project. So all that sunk infrastructure is worth tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. Yes. Uh, and we have all of that. And that puts us that much further ahead than everyone else, together with the mine permits, which also puts us years ahead in, in development timeline. So. You know, we are in a very good position and the replacement value of all of that is extremely valuable. And, uh, you know, some people sometimes ignore some, some of that historical cost, but it is extremely valuable. Because if you go to a project that is in the middle of nowhere, you can only get by helicopter, you know, you don't have that. You're going to have to, 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 to build that from scratch and that's not going to be cheap. Yeah, I mean, that's what developers look for and yeah. producers. So. Exactly. Your access costs are much lower than typical companies, what you're telling me. Exactly. Yeah, excellent. Well, I ask everybody, uh, all the executives, is when is, do you think the stock of gold, or price of gold is going to be going up? <laughs> well, <laughs> let me consult my crystal ball. Uh, <laughs> well, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, we can talk about micro a little bit, to be honest. Sure. Uh, I... Uh, I think, with, honestly, within the next 12 months, uh, probably within the next six, but really, I don't know. It will be market dependence. But what, what I'm seeing, for example, I look at the, at the Fed. They, they say they're going to they they raise rates to over 4% before the end of the year. Right, yeah, um, I agree. The U.S. government has over $31 trillion, $31 trillion in debt right now. At 4% interest rates, they've just the amount service the debt just to, just to pay interest not even to start repaying the debt is astronomical and it's, uh, it's we're, we're talking about trillions uh, so when we look at the federal government last year 
in uh, in revenue four trillion uh, and maybe five and a half in in spending. I just can't see the government bal balancing balancing that off. So uh, so we have con constraints on the fiscal side for the U.S. government. Um, you have uh, also uh, the rising interest rates is also ca causing a lot of uh, uh, um, negative sentiment. I think we're basically driving hard and fast into potentially a recession. And uh, with those two combined, uh, I think it's going to be a matter of time until the Fed, uh, you know, throws throws the towel or simply loses credibility. Uh, and they lose credibility. The bonds are shot, you know, and, they, and then so. and then everyone's going to be flocking, in my opinion, to precious metals, to the currency that would stand the wow. test of time for thousands and thousands of a year, which is gold or gold and silver. Yeah, I actually agree. And the reason I think it's going to be a window six to nine months is because everything competes with cash. And so once people get to a balancing point where, OK, I've got enough cash to do what I need because they're so over leveraged. That will invest a lot more in precious metals exactly. and things that are more uh, solid. So, any last words you'd like to tell uh, investors? No, I think uh, you know. First of all, just want to thank you for having me here, and thank sure. everyone for for listening. And uh, you know, just uh, ask everyone to do their research, look at mon monetary history, uh, and also when you look at companies, you know, there's a lot of opportunity out there, including Casser Gold. So, you know, feel free to come and check our website, uh, CasserGold.com. Uh, or, you know, on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and even on Instagram. Uh, not, yet, not yet on TikTok, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, feel free to come, uh, reach out, and, uh, you know, we're happy to, to sit with and, and talk with any investor that's interested in the space and wants to know more about our story. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you for your time, Marco. Thank you, Sean. All right.